Hey folks, it's time for yet another custom lesson. This one has been requested by the Llama Guy. Nice. Custom lesson request. Lots of anima and keys supported by magic. The first weapon will be a switch glaive that's corrupted, and the secondary weapon can either be dual swords, hatchets, fist, or tonfa. I decided to go with tonfa. Guardian spirits can be anything. One of them just has to be brute, and I just have to use Epon and I can pick whatever other soul cores I'd like. I would like this build to gain plenty of anima and key usage of magic to buff myself. Would like an element of health regeneration without the use of medicine. I'm on Dream of the Demon, so I don't have ethereal stuff and graces. Also, love your vids, keep up the great work, and thank you. So let's get on to the weapons that I'm working with and a little bit of build advice, not too detailed. So you can see here I'm using ethereal weapons and I know you don't have access to those. So my advice would be just pick whatever corrupted taunt for a switch glaive that you want and then temper on your own life drain active life drain active skill or life drain melee attack which probably would be better uh, that doesn't require anything special you have access to vines you can get it this start stuff is just mainly for my own use you don't really need any of this so yeah just any generic corrupted switch glaive with life drain melee attack that you put on there also to facilitate life recovery I would advise you put on life recovery on Amrita Absorption. You can put this pretty much from the beginning of the game, so you shouldn't have any trouble. Get it on your chest and get it on whatever accessories you can put it on. It is definitely very helpful. Also, since you do use Omnia Magic, Extraction Talisman will be very handy so that you can get a ton of life back just by being active in combat. So let's get on to the Soul Cores next, starting with the Guardian Spirits I chose. So. I was thinking about many different options when it came to Guardian Spirits and I settled on Hyokucho simply because of all the key bonuses. So one other thing, if you use your soul cores you regenerate key as it is and this just helps you have more key. And in the event that you do decide to use some sort of medicine, boom, you got medicine burst which can be pretty handy. But yeah, you don't have to worry too much about losing or having trouble with key recovery if you're in the habit of using your soul cores in the first place. But that's going to depend upon your anima generation. So I went with a little weird with my setup this time. The first and probably one of the most important soul cores of this setup is actually Onryoki. Onryoki, while this is ethereal, is absolutely worth boosting its soul core rank up as high as possible. Reason being, these lock stats are awesome. Anima bonus damage taken. Well, the reason why that's great is because we take damage all the time in Neo, like <laughs> all the time. And being able to turn a negative into a positive is awesome. So you don't have to worry too much about playing perfectly because in the moments that you don't, you get anima back, which is good. Also, reducing the amount of damage you take during any attack is always really valuable. So I know you can't get to rank 30, but definitely boost the soul core rank up as high as you can. Yokai ability key pulse was the only other stat I cared for. Everything else is merely extra. Now to go for a gap closer that also helps you with life recovery, Hellish Hag is basically the choice. I noticed that you had wanted Epon, but Epon doesn't work too well against humans, which is why I wanted something that kind of rounded out the whole toolkit that gave you a lot of anti-human capabilities, specifically when they block. So Hellish Hag is a great gap closer and is quite phenomenal for enemies who decide to block and dodge and all that annoying crap. You can also boost the soul core rank up. I didn't, as you can see here. I have Yokai ability key pulse, it's redundant at this point. Last but not least, we have Epon itself, as you requested. You can boost this rank up if you do have some investment in scorching enemies, but honestly, all these stats are pure luxury. You don't even need to rank this up whatsoever, in my opinion. So let's get on to the secondary guardian spirit, which is a brute. Now, since you're using a corrupted switch clave and you just want anima generation and probably corrupted weapon support, Baku is arguably the best one for that. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong with anima charge, melee damage versus corrupted enemies. Pretty awesome. Now, when it comes to the soul cores, given that I have a lot of attunement, I wanted to take advantage of that a bit. So I decided to go with Magatsu Warrior. And this serves multiple purposes. One, Mogatsu Warrior is a fantastically powerful core, specifically in close range, as I cover in my guide. And you can't go wrong with these stats. These special effects are phenomenal. Boost them up as high as you can. But this serves multiple purposes. You can pair it with Extraction Talisman and basically get a ton of life back. And you deal a lot of damage. And the Anima Charge bonus is really great. And this deals a lot of key damage. So. It's very, very multi-purpose, so strongly recommend it for this. Now, for a core that has more anti-human 
sort of capabilities and can be very valuable in helping you set up all sorts of combos. Dweller is great. And it has anima generation. Anima bonus on grapple, which hopefully you are doing very frequently now that you're on demon. And you can turn that into an even greater bonus as opposed to just nullifying the curse and getting damage. Now you get more anima generation. And going back to Mogatsu Warrior, I forgot to mention, this anima charge bonus isn't necessarily too valuable on ferals, but is great on brute cores and phantom cores. So that's why I recommend you get this up to 30 plus the whole active skill damage when you get the chance. Last but not least, we have Anenra. So Anenra, I wanted to have another source of elemental damage that just could be very, very powerful. I was surprised at how often I could use this for a prolonged period of time. And Anenra is overall a pretty expensive core, but with all these anima generators I've talked about, especially this one, Anima Bonus Scorched Enemy, I was surprised how like I could I could use this. Like it's pretty ridiculous. Also, you were talking about anima, so here you go. Anima. Boost it up as soon as you can. It's a very powerful core. But in any case, enough about that. Um, we got the stats that we need, we got Yokai ability keep balls. Let's just see all this in action. So let me show you some Yokai Chef combos that I think would be great. Come on, Ippon, do your thing. Do your thing. D do your thing, please. Okay, thank you. So when you pop Yokai Shift, this is my recommendation on how you start. Like that. So, Hyokucho, and then Onryoki. If you hopefully, you should be close range for this. And I find that you need to use both of those soul cores in that capacity anyway. But yeah, usually after you get the grapple, you're close enough with Feral to do that, and it can be very devastating. Pretty rad. Uh, when it comes to Epon use, you can feel free to use it however you like. But my recommendation generally is to charge in and then do Epon. Do a bunch of extra attacks. You can Hellish Hag if your target is backdash heavy like a human. But yeah, opening up with the Guardian Spirit into Onryoki is actually very devastating. Monoyoki does quite a bit of damage. Now when it comes to the brute form, this is gonna be a little weird. For the most part, I would say you're gonna combo with the first two soul cores, Magatsu and Dweller, quite a lot. And it can be very powerful. But for me, the biggest power of this setup comes from the following. Not that is using the talisman and then, or sorry, using the skill and then using Anenra as much as you can in Yokai Shift. You effectively have access to confusion there and it can be very devastating. And Brutal Combustion, you know, the charged attack that gets upgraded in DLC 3, has fire application as it is, so you can very easily confuse a target and melt them. And in Yokai Shift, it only gets easier. Uh, normally, you'll spend a lot of anima but it can be devastating. Also, if you can, use a Nenra after you get a burst counter because it becomes even more deadly. I think it's like a 40% damage increase for your next ability. So it, it's definitely pretty wild. But enough about that. Let's just see some combos with the weapons and the soul cores in play just to give you some ideas. Cute, right? Just two cores, Hellish Hag and Dweller. For seven anima, that guy basically got murdered. <laughs> Oops, I actually did not mean to do that. I was trying to do Dweller instead. But Dweller is very handy, it's only three anima. And you can get that grapple so often. It's just so effective. Dweller is one of those cores that I'm continuously impressed by. I mean, I'm able to basically set off a fleeting edge. Oh, that was rough. That's okay, give him the hammer. Dead. But yeah, there are many ways you can take advantage of these things, and you're just going to get to see that. Oh, 
devastating. One soul core just murdered that poor guy. Oh, really? Didn't work out too well there. That's okay. If you have the good fortune of trapping an enemy, Magatsu Warrior is your friend. <laughs> it's so good. All right, let's see what else I can come up with for you. That's always a fun one. Divine Retribution into Onryoki, just so you can make sure you can get extra damage from it. Use a Nenra to position around. A Nenra is something you kind of have to plan, in my opinion. The rest, not so much. You don't really have to plan using Onryoki, Ipo, and Hellish Hag, uh, Mogatsu, or Dweller. You can kind of just layer them in as combos, in my opinion. But yeah, and then right, you kind of got to plan out. Oh, see, that would have been a decent moment for Hellish Hag. Too bad I was in Brute. Yeah, anytime you move awkwardly around, you can use Soul Cores like Hellish Hag to keep you on track. Let's see what I can show. Let's see what else I can show you real quick. That's not really what I had in mind. Now let's see what I can, else I can generate. Come on. There you go, isn't that beautiful? You'll be surprised how much anima you can get from the Mystic Art attack if you're able to pull it off, so then you can do like a double stagger with Epon. It's pretty fun. Oh, I'm missing! Dang it. See, that was the next combo I wanted to show. Let show you other things. All right, then we can go in. Very nice, right? There you go, a couple of ideas. Let's show one more thing of each uh, against each opponent, and then we'll be good to go. Oh, it didn't work out as well as I'd hoped. Oh my god, are you kidding? Fine, this is when you get frustrated and use the hammer, okay? Here we go. All right, one more time against a human. Just, just one more time. I, I can be here for days. I need. To, I have to remind myself to not get a little carried away with things. Jeez, the break on that is enormous. Okay, good, close enough, close enough, all right. Hopefully that was instructive, but you'll see how this plays out in a scroll in the damned. I will see you guys momentarily. All right, let's put this to the test. In this scroll of the damned, we're gonna start by fighting Suchi Gumo, who's gonna be incredibly difficult to keep up with. 
and we don't necessarily have any projectile based things so we're gonna have to use our soul course to good effect uh, one little tip for Tsuchiguma which I probably have mentioned before is that when he's like on the wall and you know he's gonna like spin and jump and all that crap usually you can use some sort of projectile to hit his weak spot and knock him down but I don't have that at my disposal with the soul course so I really gotta pay attention Tomfa is coming in very handy here. I didn't get the best use of Dweller there, and it would have been really nice to lock him in place. So for now, I'm just trying to make sure I can set things up and keep him under pressure traditionally with key damage and whatnot, making this fight a little bit trickier than I would have hoped. And then Hellish Hag is a decent gap closer there. Oh boy, all right, getting him very low on key, which can be really awesome. Let's see what I go with. And then, oh, Onryoki, not the best use. He's a little too far away. But I remedy that by using Yokai Shift to quickly kill him. I started by using Ippo and I meant to do Onryoki, but oh well, he's dead. Does it matter if I didn't perform exactly as I talked about in the dojo? Not really, because we've got to deal with Lightning Gods at Yomi, and so yeah, I gotta pay attention. So Tanfun's Demon Dance is gonna help me quite a bit. You can see some of the value with Onryoki. Uh, Ippon is actually also gonna be very handy at interrupting her from some of her, some of her more annoying attacks. So it can be very handy for that effect. And yeah, let's just go in. We've got excellent, we've got the burst counter. And here you're gonna see in a moment how powerful Anenra can be. So all right, we've got 17 anima. Let's use Anenra at this time with the burst counter focus thing that gives me a bunch of damage to do a good chunk of work. Yomi is very tanky, so it can be exceedingly difficult to keep her under pressure. Like, look how quickly Confusion is evaporating because she's like resistant to pretty much everything except Purity. Um, and then she's weak to Purity and not resistant to fire, but it's kind of painful to work with, especially when you got spam. Oh boy, Epon didn't work out too well. Now it will, doing a great chunk of key damage, helping me inflict Scorch, getting close to that anyway. And then, all right, let's do the switch wave mystic art thing, which missed, man, that felt bad. But you know what's nice is that Onryoki is doing a good chunk of work. I take damage and I get anima back. Let's go into Brute Yokai Shift though and show you what's possible. And I, I think I kind of lean a little hard on the Brute Yokai Shift. It is remarkably powerful. Look at that confusion, which is up. Got the burst counter. I go straight into a Nenra. Look at that damage that's being dealt. This is awesome and how long I could keep up and then run to the point I can move and dodge all sorts of attacks. Using Mavatsu Warrior to help clinch a lot of key damage. Dweller doing a good chunk of work. Look at that, got Confusion off once more, did a whopping amount of damage. I was trying to swap over back to Feral, just wasn't working, so I'm just like, all right, whatever, I'll just use a Nenra as long as I have it. And it does quite a lot of work for me. So you can almost say a Nenra carried me pretty well here. All right, let's go in with some great combos using Switch Wave Play. I just need to be wary of all the fancy lightning stuff, which is basically all she does all the time. All right, Halish Hag being okay, not the best use. I should have probably used it a little further away. I can afford to take damage courtesy of Onryoki. Like, I'm not having as much trouble as I thought I would. And originally I thought, hey, I got all these expensive soul cores. Aren't I gonna run out? And the answer is really no. <laughs> like, it was pretty awesome to have all this anima generation. And yeah, it's, it's definitely very valuable. But all right, let's show you one of those combos that I did in the dojo. I was hoping to use it as a finisher. Divine Retribution, I'm right on top of her. Use Divine Retribution to get the Onryoki in place and then Focus Retribution to finish her to pieces. So there you go, that's that. In any case, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was instructive and helpful. And I will, of course, see everybody next time. Take care, everyone.